I remember that first data set from from Mathare and Kosovo. I mean, we had something you did enumerated three or four thousand households. You said here, you know, geocode it and make sense of it. And I think something like thirty something percent we could look at. And so, still a good number, you know, from a data point. But we, it was a kind of a lost opportunity. It was all these little things around data entry and, you know, so things people would ask a question like. How much water do you use? And some people would say two jerry cans. Some people would say, you know, uh, 20 liters. So just things like putting units on the question. From our side, yeah, I think it was understanding that data is a political process wherever it, it happens. And mapping is also, you know, very political. So that um, for our guys, our students to recognize that it's not just a neutral data set, that it has a social and political purpose behind it. Um, and that sometimes imperfect data that mobilizes communities is better than quote unquote perfect data that nobody sees themselves in or do doesn't relate to, in other words. So yeah, I think the learning ha has gone both ways. But I mean, you know, here we are eight, nine years later and you're still using paper maps and paper forms for data collection and some ways that's great but you know now we've got iPhones and GPS things that we didn't have when we first started um, so I think there's still room to figure out how to systematize and and continue the you know the social aspects of data collection but also um, you know in some ways make it more efficient for you so you don't lose the 60 percent of all that rich information because of some small errors. Community residents are the experts. They know more about their everyday living conditions than any survey, any data collection instrument will ever tell us. Because data is really a simplification of a complex reality. That's its definition. And it's a strategic snapshot in time. It can't ever tell the full story of the life and living conditions that people are facing. Too often we still train people in, in acad, you know, academia, particularly at a place like Berkeley, to think, oh, somehow you're better or smarter or know more than somebody else, particularly in a community. Um, so if they have that attitude or sensibility, um, I don't want them on, the, on our side of the research team because uh, we really believe that, you know, even with the best data, it's still an incomplete story. Uh, and that the real experts are people living in communities. And uh, they have a lot to share and that we, you know, we as outsiders in particular have to learn from them and, and what they go through on a daily basis.